Alright, so I'm going to show you guys what I've been working on for a little while now. That is a universal memory unit for the original Xbox. And we're going to start by inserting a freshly formatted FAT32 SD card. And before I put it in the controller, let's go to memory. Okay, so as you can see, this is going to go right into the controller and you don't need a modded console to take advantage of this. So let's insert it and it's going to create an 8 megabyte memory unit. There it is, mu1.bin. And this is as it appears on the SD card. And it's byte perfect, formatted directly to FATX from the microcontroller. And let's see, there it is, you can see it in the menu. Let's make another. And these are ready to go. These will work immediately in a game or dashboard, whatever. So let's go to settings. Go to file settings. Memory unit size. And we'll increase it to 16 megabytes. So let's, okay, updated. Now, the next one we make will be 16 megabytes and it will reflect that down here in this footer text. There it is. We'll change modes to USB mode, virtual USB. And it's going to create a four gigabyte file usable by the Xbox. You'll see there it says it has been erased. The way this works is it will create the file, mount it for the Xbox or the host system, and that host system will format it. The Xbox's support for thumb drives is spotty at best. Some can support FAT32, others can't. So I leave it up to the user to decide what they want to do. You can format it either on your PC as FAT32, or you can plug it into the dashboard and format it to FATX. There's pros and cons to each. So there's the basics. We have memory units and USB mode. The purpose of USB mode obviously is for copying larger files to the Xbox on a custom dash. Um, the downside is this is USB 1.1 speed, meaning you'll, you will get one megabyte a second at best, absolute best. Um, this average is roughly 650 kilobytes a second, which if you know anything about the RP2040 microcontroller, even that is kind of a feat with using dual cores, one to control the screen and the other for handling uh, data to the host. Next up, we're gonna load a custom dash and I'll show you some of the other features. I'm aware that a lot of people like to use their Blue Retro wireless controllers and they may not have a memory unit port. So this has USB-C data built into the port on the top. So let's plug it in and you'll see the memory unit has just mounted. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is the name of the memory unit will also be displayed at the top. So you can name it in the original Xbox dash, uh, whatever you like, and it'll appear up there. So if you have a specific memory card for a game or an exploit, you can just put it in there and you'll know which memory card you're using. Now let's go through some of the uh, quality of life features. Go into settings. We have display. Just briefly, I'll go over these. We have brightness. It might not be visible on the camera, but it does help, especially at night. You might want a little dim. So let's save that. Uh, let's go to about, okay, this has a useful one. We have our version number and enter bootloader. You can enter the bootloader directly from the menu for firmware updates. File settings, you can choose the size of the memory unit, I already showed that, but also of the uh, virtual USB drive. We have one gigabyte, two gigabyte, and four gigabyte. Four gigabyte being the maximum supported by the Xbox. One extra little feature I added 
regarding brightness is the ability to turn the OLED off. So you press and hold this button and the OLED's off and will stay off until you press either of these buttons here. So like that. Very cool. Memory unit files created by this are directly compatible with software like uh, Fat Explorer, for example. You can copy saves, back them up, inject saves into the file itself, and you won't have any issues at all. This is a 16 megabyte memory unit, you can see down there. So let's copy, open up the folder first, and we will copy. Okay, and that's the gist of it. Um, it won't be replacing FTP anytime soon, but it is the easiest way to get you there. You don't even need a special cable, you can just plug it right into an original controller. And you could also use a cable if you want. So you get, you get options with it, which is really nice. Thanks for watching. Take care.